And with that, I've had a bunch of emails from women talking about how they get a lot of pain during their orgasm. So basically in the, um, in the abdominal region, but either just at the point of getting the orgasm, either during the orgasm, or even sometimes immediately after the orgasm. So I'd like to talk about that today. But also, there's an email that came in just very recently, which was to do with the same idea of pain during orgasm, but it was slightly different. So it came from a lady who was widowed recently. She said that she lost her husband during COVID. And she said that she's actually recently again come to this idea of um, self-pleasuring. So she's trying to now come back to normal life, which is fantastic. And I, you know, well done to her. But she says that what does happen is that the moment she tries to self-pleasure goes fine up to the point when she reaches that point of orgasm, she gets the shooting pain, but with her, it's on the right side of her head. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about pain and orgasm? Okay, so let's start with your first question first. Uh, pain during orgasm is a, a condition called dysorgasmia. Uh, I want to distinguish a little bit. You know, everybody feels a little bit of stress, tension, your pelvic muscles contract. You feel that during the climax of the orgasm. We're not talking about that discomfort or that sharp, you know, pleasure that we feel. We're talking about something that is uncomfortable. It's painful. Sex needs to be pleasurable. So if at any any point it's becoming uncomfortable or painful, then we need to look at it. We need to go to meet someone and see what's going on. And so, like I said, this condition is called dysorgasmia. And what it really is that a lot of times the pelvic muscles contract when we orgasm. However, when they have to relax, they might not, they might be too tense or they might be too tight or they might be too short. And that causes a shooting pain. Um, and it's actually a muscular pain actually at that time. So pretty much like when we go to our personal trainer and she almost kills us on that bench. <laughs> exactly. uh, it's a, so it's, a, it's as simple as that, that it's because it's a muscle and the muscle is not contracting or going back into its own position like it should and that's causing the shooting pain well that reason is one of you know if we think about a physiological reason that's one of the reasons it could be it could be you know we have to see how often it's happening is it once happened did you do something you know it's just like your back is hurting did you do something wrong and you know so is it something that's happening occasionally or is it happening all the time so that's something we have to review however there are medical reasons why the mu pelvic muscle could also be tight you know it could be related to endometriosis it could be due to a pelvic inflammatory disease which happens related to stis which are unchecked or ovarian cysts but you know i think all these and there are many more but i think this just stresses people out um, it doesn't mean just because there's pain during orgasm doesn't mean you have any of these but if there is pain you should really get it checked out. You should go and meet an OBGYN and rule out any medical conditions that might be causing this pain. Um, and if the medical condition is not there, then for the pelvic floor, there are actually pelvic floor physiotherapists now. Really? What fun. They're actually pelvic physiotherapists. Where were they yeah. when I was younger? Yeah, exactly. And and vaginal and pelvic. And so I think they help you. Uh, they teach you pelvic floor exercises. You know, if there is tightness there, they'll help you find ways to help you release it. Uh, and more importantly, they might give you some breathing exercises or yoga postures or positions that you could do on a preventative basis or after your orgasm, you know, just to manage the muscles and the pain. So they might really give you some tips around it. Um, so it's worth a shout to go and visit a physiotherapist and ask, what could you do? So a lot of people, when I was researching it, is related to do with like breathing or yoga postures or positions. And that would really help with the pelvic floor exercises. That makes so much sense. Um, you know, because I have that same problem with my jaw and I was just told that it's the muscle over there that's actually causing it, not... Um, there's no structural problems. So yeah, that makes so much sense. But uh, okay, so that's to do with the abdominal region. What about the lady who talked about it happening in the head? 
Yeah, and so, you know, like we've said in every video that when there is an issue, we have to consider that there could be an emotional, medical, relational, or physiological reason. So we have taken care of the physiological and medical in some ways. You know, we've said go to a pelvic floor thing or the OBGYN. What we haven't taken care of is that if there is an emotional reason behind it. A lot of people will speak about pain during orgasm, say if they've come from houses that are really shaming around and there's a lot of taboo around sex and sexuality. So, you know, you're going with it, going with it, and then you might feel a lot of guilt when you orgasm. And that guilt might translate into pain. So we don't know the connection. And I'm thinking similarly, as in what a brave woman to write to you, uh, what a brave woman to actually give herself you know, the freedom to say this is a need and I'm going to and the permission it, to master it. Yeah, I think it takes a lot to give yourself permission. Um, so really a big shout out to her. Like, I think she's quite inspirational to write to you and think about it. But I wonder. Yeah, and I also uh, I was also thinking, you know, like um, sex, our sexual organs are intelligent organs. They literally feel everything that goes on in the head and the body, everything manifests over there, like you've said in the past. And so I guess they pick up emotions that we have hidden so far back in our heads that we may not be able to identify them immediately, but the sexual organs have picked it up. So it could very well be an emotional thing. However, as you said earlier, if there is some kind of sharp shooting pain, going to a doctor is always a good idea. I'm just thinking how easy it is going to be for somebody in her situation you can almost see the judgment can't you you can almost hear it recently widowed look at what she's doing look she's getting the pain this is a this is a sign you can almost hear it and I just want to say that um, please you know if you do get told something like this do not take it on board this is just generations of DNA memory talking like this yeah. You know, yeah, no, this is I, not correct. I completely agree with you because I can just, you know, hear people. So one I would really suggest to her is find somebody safe that you can go and speak to. You know, it could be a friend. It could be somebody that you trust, a family member that's not going to judge you uh, for, you know, trying this. Like it is a really normal need. I just want to normalize it. So just because you've lost a partner doesn't mean that you can't have sexual feelings. Um, it would be way more accepting in a man. And I'm not saying this. I'm sure men feel a lot of loss and might, you know, stay away from sex when they've lost their partner so it can be as traumatic for them but what I'm saying is that they might not be met with so much judgment in some ways as much as the woman uh, so find some place safe to go and talk so even if you can find a therapist because that's a confidential space where there will be less judgment because it could be that you know, it could be something emotional that's causing it. That there could be a possibility that when you engage with sex, it's triggering feelings of grief or mourning or memories of the past relationship. And I don't know how the relationship was and what was it like. So is it tri triggering memories? Could be of loss, could be of pain. And that is causing the headache in some ways or guilt or shame, like we said. So there's so many feelings that could be present there. Um, and just finding somebody who you can speak to, I think, will really help, you know, really release some of those feelings or emotions and maybe relax your body more. Everything we're talking about in some ways is relaxing the body, right? We're saying it's tight and the tightness could come from physical things or emotional things or memories that might be present. Um, so I would really suggest going and, you know, seeing somebody and talking to them. So I guess what we're saying here at the end of it is that um, pain during orgasm is we're talking about very specific pain where it's like a shooting sharp bad pain, not the usual kind of contraction that you feel during orgasm. So don't confuse the two and start thinking that you have a problem. Secondly, that uh, a lot of women get this. A lot of women suffer with pain during orgasm. So it's not unusual and you're not like the one person out there who's going through it and you're not alone in this. So don't feel 
so unhappy and so uncomfortable thinking that, oh my God, there's nobody else and I'm the only one suffering with this. It could be something as straightforward as just muscle tightness. And you can work on that by just going to a muscle, a pelvic muscle physio person, which is amazing. Um, if it persists, please go and see a gynecologist, go and see a doctor so that you can have it treated just in case. And finally, it could be to do with your emotional or even uh, the upbringing of um, being told that it's a guilty, shameful thing. So it could be any one of those things. Might be worth speaking to somebody or even seeing a therapist if you can manage that. I think we've covered all the points, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and you know, there are so many. And, and I think sometimes it's difficult to talk. Like, it's hard enough talking about sex. So once again, it's a great question because we're talking specifically about orgasm. And it's tricky because you can see the loop that it causes. You anticipate the pain and then you want to avoid sex or then sex can get you know, hurtful or you, the the lubrication doesn't happen and the vagina becomes tight and it's dry. So do you see how it can start a vicious circle? So if it is present, it's something that is treatable, please do go and get a, get some help. Otherwise it's just going to increase the complications then decrease it. So please do get some help. That's great advice. Thank you, Anvita. Well, I hope that you found this video useful. If you have enjoyed it, do please like, comment, subscribe. And of course, we'll see you over here again very soon.